hey everyone welcome back to my channel so in this video i'll be showing you guys how to approach someone else's questions about neonates and also all the uh, duct dependent tonic heart diseases the pda dependent ones so let's get started so we got a one day old newborn who's brought to the er due to worsening cyanosis he was born via spontaneous vaginal delivery and was doing well after delivery the key here guys is that this baby was born perfectly fine but then over the next few hours after birth he started developing tachypnea and cyanosis when we checked his pulse oximetry it's 80 percent and it doesn't improve with 100 percent oxygen what does that mean when i have any case guys of neonatal cyanosis first i want to know whether this is peripheral cyanosis just because of the cold vasoconstriction or is it central cyanosis where the baby's blood itself is deoxygenated so the first thing i do is use a pulse oximeter and check oxygenation if this were peripheral cyanosis it's just an issue with cold and the vasoconstriction it's just the peripheral circulation issue the pulse oximeter will give a good reading above 94 percent and that's fine so i don't need to be concerned however if the pulse oximetry shows a low reading such as in this case it's 80 percent this is a case of central cyanosis then there must be a cardiopulmonary issue either the lungs are not oxygenating and ventilating properly or it could be that there is a shunt in the heart that's mixing deoxygenated blood with oxygenated blood to differentiate the two I will administer 100% oxygen. 100% oxygen, guys, should improve pulmonary conditions and increase the oxygenation. And so when I recheck, I'm going to find that pulse oximetry, uh, SpO2 is rising. But if it doesn't change, then there must be an intracardiac shunt or something that's mixing blood and causing the oxygenated blood to mix with oxygenated blood. And in that case, it's gonna be a cardiac condition. In that case, in our case, guys, the baby cyanosis did not improve with 100% oxygen. So it's not a pulmonary issue, it's rather a cardiac issue or a cyanotic heart disease. Now, there is something called ductal dependent cyanotic heart disease or PDA dependent. When the baby is born perfectly fine, but then they start getting worse over the next hours, it means that they're getting worse because the, the ductus arteriosus is closing, right? Initially, the baby was doing fine because of the presence of a PDA. As the PDA starts to close in the next few hours, I'm going to tell you why, guys, this baby starts developing cyanosis. Now... I want you to remember with me, guys, the function of the ductus arteriosus and that it has more of an importance in utero. And it used to communicate between the aorta and the pulmonary arteries to allow blood in, in utero to flow from the pulmonary circulation to the systemic circulation, right? After birth, as the left side of the heart becomes dominant and increasing in pressure, this, this uh, communication is reversed. So instead, blood actually flows from the left side, from the aorta, into the pulmonary circulation, right? And so this provides more blood to the pulmonary system. Now... Normally, this should close after birth and there should be no communication between the aorta and pulmonary circulations after birth. All right. If it remains open, that is called a patent ductus arteriosus. Now, sometimes in some congenital heart defects, guys, we need this to be functioning because in some congenital heart diseases, as I'm going to mention, there is no communication between the right and left sides and there is mixing of 
the oxygenated blood and the only way by which blood can be oxygenated is if this blood passes into the pulmonary system to the lungs to be oxygenated so this is the only leeway for this baby to get oxygen as i'm going to mention right now one of these conditions guys is transposition of the great vessels with transposition of the great vessels everything is upside down so instead of the aorta coming out of the left side of the heart carrying oxygenated blood in this case the aorta is coming out of the right side of the heart guys so all the blood in the systemic circulation is deoxygenated that's blue blood guys and the other way around on the left side the pulmonary artery is coming out of the left side, going to the lungs and getting oxygenated. But it comes back to the left side and it doesn't reach the systemic circulation. So the left side of the heart has the pulmonary artery coming out of it. Uh, blood gets oxygenated in the lungs and then back into the left side. So it's called a parallel circulation, guys. It's as if we have a separate circulation here. The left side is getting oxygenated on its own and nothing is reaching the tissues and on the right side we have a completely separate circulation where deoxygenated blood is reaching the tissues and they are hypoxic and this baby cannot survive if there is no communication between the left and right sides if there is nothing to allow this oxygenated blood from the pulmonary circulation into the systemic circulation this baby will die all right so the only way for this to happen is there must be a connection whether this connection is through the atria and asd for example or a vsd or a pda a patent ductus arteriosus all right guys that's the only way possible and that's why this is one of the conditions that is PDA dependent. So I must maintain the ductus arteriosus patent in this case in order for the baby to survive until we do surgical correction. That may be one of the conditions the baby could have had, right? Because this is one of the ductal dependent cyanotic congenital heart diseases. And for this reason, the next step, as the question asks us, would be to keep the PDA patent. And what keeps the PDA patent? That's prostaglandin E1. All right. So if the baby's condition does not improve with 100% oxygen, it must be an intracardiac shunt that is ductal dependent because it's getting worse over the next few hours as the duct starts closing. Right, So I need to maintain the duct without even knowing what this baby has. I know this baby must be having a PDA-dependent lesion. I don't know what it is, but I know that this will save his or her life. Right, This is one. Another ductal-dependent congenital heart disease that this baby might have had would be tricuspid atresia. With tricuspid atresia, guys, the tricuspid valve is closed meaning that it's not allowing blood from the right atrium into the right ventricle so how can blood from the right side of the heart reach the pulmonary circulation this must be through an asd so there is in fact a septal defect that is allowing this blood from the right atrium to the left side first and then into a common ventricle that is pumped into both circulations, the pulmonary and aortic circulations, right? Now, this is one of the conditions where if there is no communication between the right and left sides, this baby will die because let's imagine there is no single communication going on here. All the blood is going to be trapped in the right atrium and is not going to reach the systemic circulation, right? So that's another one of these conditions. Imagine if there is no uh, atrial septal defect, for example. The only way possible for this blood from the right side to reach the systemic circulation would have been through a PDA, right? 
Okay, now a third cause of ductal dependent cyanotic congenital heart disease is this complicated total anomalous pulmonary venous return. What does that mean? Normally, guys, blood gets oxygenated in the lungs and then goes back into the left side of the heart through the pulmonary veins. And then it has to get into the left atrium, then the left ventricle, and then reach all the tissues through the aorta. Now, if these pulmonary veins do not open into the left atrium, but instead open on the right side, that is a disaster. Here we have a communicating vein that allows these pulmonary veins to drain into the right side of the heart. That means that all the blood full of oxygen, all the bright red blood that should have reached the left side to the systemic circulation to reach the tissues are now mixing with the oxygenated blood on the right side of the heart. That is a, a big, big disaster because that means oxygen is not reaching the tissues. It's all mixing up here in the uh, right side of the heart and then into the pulmonary artery and no good blood is really reaching the systemic circulation. So without a PDA here to allow this into the aorta, this baby will die. So this is another cause of PDA-dependent congenital cyanotic heart disease, which is total anomalous pulmonary venous return. Here, I must allow blood to flow between the aorta and the pulmonary circulation. So these were the conditions, guys, the cyanotic congenital heart diseases that are PDA dependent, where I must allow blood to flow via the patent ductus arteriosus between the aorta and pulmonary systems in order to avoid cyanosis. Now, there are other conditions that are also ductal dependent, but they are not cyanotic heart diseases, meaning that I need the PDA in this baby to survive, but I need it in this baby to survive not because this baby has cyanosis, rather because this baby is not having a systemic circulation. Let's see this better here. So we have two conditions where PDA is required just to maintain a systemic circulation. Why? Because there is a coarctation because there is really a very narrow aorta that will not allow all the blood through. This is one possibility. Or because the left side of the heart is really hypoplastic and it's not pumping enough. So I need some sort of a shunt to bypass that. So those are the two conditions that are PDA dependent. I need the PDA here as a bypass, as a shortcut to allow blood into the systemic circulation not because of cyanosis, not because of anything else, just to maintain blood pressure and a good circulation to flow. So the first of these conditions is aortic coarctation. If it's really narrow here and not enough blood can pass through, a shunt will help me in that case if I have a PDA here to bypass that step and allow blood to flow directly into the distal part, into the systemic circulation, that's going to be a plus. Another ductal dependent lesion required for the systemic circulation to flow is a hypoplastic cleft heart syndrome. What does that mean? It means that the, as you can see here in this picture, guys, the left ventricle is really small and hypoplastic. Even the uh, left atrium, even the aorta is really small, guys. So it's not generating enough pressure to push blood to the systemic circulation. In this case, I will benefit a lot from a PDA where I have a really nice right side of the heart that's pumping enough. Some of this blood can reach the systemic circulation through the PDA. This way, it's allowing at least some oxygen to reach the systemic circulation. Yes, I know that there is mixing. Yes, I know that this can lead to cyanosis, but at least it's better than nothing because otherwise blood wouldn't have even flown to the tissues, right? So 
this guys what were the um, congenital heart diseases that are PDA dependent how do they present in the neonatal period they present with a baby who's getting cyanotic hours after birth not immediately after birth because until the PDA closes it takes a couple of hours so the more it closes the worse the cyanosis that's the first clue the second clue is that the baby does not respond to 100% oxygen they're desaturated and not responding to oxygenation it means that something is wrong with the heart not the lungs okay so you know it's a congenital heart disease and you know that it's pda dependent the next step here guys is to administer prostaglandin you want to keep the pda patent until you find out what's wrong so you can correct it i hope this video helped let's let me know what you think guys all the best